Before we actually get started working with Scratch proper and learning how to program with Scratch, I think it's important to take just a few minutes to talk about the background and the, and the rationale and the history behind Scratch. So Scratch is a project that originally came out of the MIT Media Lab, the, the lifelong kindergarten group at MIT, in 2006. And it's currently being maintained and developed by the lifelong kindergarten group in collaboration with the UCLA Graduate School of Education. Scratch is uh, a free programmable toolkit that is targeted toward kids ages 8 through 18. Um, as you know, teaching this now to a bunch of adults, so we're clearly using it with people over the age of 18. Uh, 8 probably being about the lower limits with this. It's the lower limit that I've successfully used this, although I know people who have used it with younger kids in limited contexts. Uh, but it's designed to be able to engage kids in creating their own interactive art, animated stories, games, uh, basically all sorts of things, and then be able to share those creations with one another over the internet. And we'll see all those components in the modules of this course. Uh, but again, one of the biggest things that, that, that the creators of Scratch wanted to have was this ability to have kids imagine something, some idea for a story, some idea for an animation or a game, and then be able to sit down and fairly easily program that and share that with their, with their peers, with their uh, with fellow students. And so you see that at the top of the screen, imagine, program, share, and it's the Scratch logo. And that's a big fundamental idea about what Scratch is. Scratch builds on the concept of logo and some of the, the, the logo-like software that came out of, the, uh, out of Lego. And so those of you who are computer science, uh, who have a computer science background, uh, might have heard about logo. Logo, net logo, star logo, all flavors of this. Logo was developed by uh, Seymour Papert in uh, about 1967. And it was designed by Papert and his colleagues to be an easy way to get children engaged with computer programming. It, it's probably most known uh, over time for its work with turtle graphics, this idea of having a, uh, a little turtle that you controlled on the computer screen and you told the turtle to go forward and turn and, and go forward again and, and the turtle drew lines, left a trail of where he was as he went around uh, on, the, on the screen. And, and in fact, you're gonna see that in our, in our first module, that exact idea. Our first module is using Scratch like logo. And so Scratch builds on this idea of logo and some of the software that, that Lego produced to control their robots, but then takes advantage and builds on that with, with more uh, computationally complex ideas. It's not just logo anymore. Um, what's really nice about Scratch, and you'll see this in this course, is that it's really easy for kids to get started with programming. Um, you, know, you see in the parentheses there, the idea of lowering the floor. The entry point for Scratch is incredibly simple. Uh, I mean, I've worked with Scratch, again, with, with eight-year-olds, and, and they get the, the very fundamentals of Scratch uh, and with Logo uh, at eight, no problem. But what's really nice about it is it also has a really high ceiling. Um, there's actually a lot you can do with Scratch. Uh, I've used Scratch with uh, college students who are taking a, a full semester of, of programming. And I, we do Scratch for maybe four or five weeks at the start of the semester. And I tell them, look, at the end of four weeks, you know just about everything there is to know about the fundamentals of computer programming. And you learn it very quickly and very easily with Scratch. And then we take those concepts and and we move them to another domain, a, a textual language like uh, Java or Python or something like that. But what's, again, what's really nice about Scratch, very easy to get started, but a lot of potential for continuing to go further as you get into Scratch, which makes it a really powerful language as a first language for kids. One of the things that's really nice about Scratch as an introductory language is that it's a graphical language. You program Scratch by connecting these graphical blocks. And, and you can see it in the little screenshot there. It, it's almost like connecting together a, a stack of Lego bricks, right? You take these little bricks, which represent individual commands, and you snap them together, and that creates your computer program. And what's really nice about doing this with a graphical language rather than a, a textual language, such as Python or C++ or Java, is that it's virtually impossible to get a syntax error, right? There's almost no typing. 
Students don't have to be able to remember the commands so much as they have to be able to recognize the commands. And you'll see this when we get into Scratch. Students simply need to be able to look at the blocks and pick out which block it is that's going to help them do what they want to do. And they don't have to remember some really you know, arcane uh, command that where you have to do forward slash dash h space uh, loop four comma colon. I'm making all this up, but you get the point. They're it's virtually impossible to make prop syntax errors. Virtually every program you write in Scratch will run. It may not do what you want it to do. That's what we call a logical error. But you cannot produce a syntax error that prevents it from running. That's almost impossible. The ultimate goal, though, with Scratch then is to be able to help kids become fluent with digital media. Right? Kids are working with, with pictures and sound and, and movement all the time when they're playing with the internet. And Scratch is a way to let them become fluent with that media and empower them so that they can express themselves, they can express their ideas, and make connections between the kinds of things that you're doing in the classroom. One of the things that those of you who aren't necessarily computer science teachers will discover about Scratch that makes it so fun and powerful is that you can take Scratch as a way to express and convey content ideas from your discipline. Uh, and so it's another tool in your, in your toolbox of ways to get students to interact with the, with the content that you're working with in a new and sort of exciting way that's, that's the way students, many students, like to uh, interact. Just as a little bit of a history behind Scratch, uh, Scratch came out again in 2006 originally. Um, the last real stable version of version 1 came out in 2009. Uh, and up until 2013, Scratch was a downloadable program. It was free. You went to the MIT website, you downloaded their executable, uh, and ran it locally on your computer. And it was available for, for Mac and Windows and Linux and all those platforms. What's really nice about Scratch is that in April of 2013, uh, they did a, a fairly significant restructuring of Scratch. One of the biggest parts of this was that it's now accessible via a Flash-enabled web browser. And so for those of you who are in school districts where, you, where it's difficult to install your own software in labs, or you've got a lab of Chromebooks, for example, that don't really allow you to install third-party software. What's great about Scratch is it runs right in the web browser. And as you'll see as we get started here, students can make accounts. Uh, online, they can work online, and, and the nice thing about this is their programs then go with them. If they go home and they have access to the internet at home, they can log back onto their account and they still have access to all that software. And so it's not something specialized that only lives in your lab and only lives on one specific machine. As long as you've got a computer with an internet connection and a flash enabled web browser, you can access uh, Scratch. Uh, it does still exist as a standalone executable. You can download uh, Scratch and run it locally off your machines. And for some teachers, they found that still is more dependable if the internet connection is sometimes flaky in their building. But for the most part, my guess is that you will all be using it via this Flash-enabled browser. That's certainly the way we're going to encourage you to do it with this course, because that's the way you're going to turn in your assignments. Well, that's it for this lesson. We talked about the origins, the history, the philosophy of Scratch in this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to move on and actually introduce you to the Scratch website and start to show you how to use their online development platform to program the very beginnings of Scratch. When you're ready to move on to the next program, you'll notice that just below this video player on the course website, there's a button labeled Next Page. When you're ready to move on, click that button and we'll start Lesson 2.